February the 22nd, 2017. As the new information coming in today from Fukushima goes back about a week and you've got three different scientists with reports coming in over that period of time. Let's take a look at it. It says scientists fear Fukushima radiation is hitting the U.S. and it's to worsen. A lot of people are very concerned. Experts, billions are being exposed. Guys, that's not just the United States. Reactors will continue to pour water into the Pacific for the rest of time. They were saying that it could be years, even hundreds of years, but now to the end of time because they have complete meltdown. And you have a water system that it runs underground, comes out of the mountains, runs underground into the ocean, and it ran under Fukushima. It couldn't have been built in a better place if you wanted to uh, create a worldwide disaster where a third of the oceans are almost dead and will now surely die. If you don't think time is very quickly possibly coming in to an end as far as the way we know life, you may be sadly mistaken with this news. And Dr. Helen Caldecott is saying, as the water flows beneath the damaged reactors, it immerses the three molten cores and becomes extremely radioactive as it continues its journey into the adjacent uh, Pacific Ocean. Every day since the accident began, 300 to 400 tons of water have poured into the Pacific. Guys, think about that. It happened March the 11th, 2011, so 2170 days roughly. And if you average that three to 400 tons, you're going to be looking at 760,000 tons of water that contains, according to them, it's uh, numerous radioisotopes, including cesium-137, 134, strontium-90, tritium, plutonium, americium, and up to 100 more. Says they enter the ocean and bioconcentrate by orders of magnitude at each step of the food chain. Tuna, salmon, and other species found on the American West Coast now contain some of these radioactive elements. Fukushima Daiichi will continue to pour water into the Pacific for the rest of time. Now, guys, I mentioned uh, Fox News earlier in a video, and I had said that I was really impressed at the fairness of uh, the way they're reporting what the new administration is doing. It's not an all-out attack like we see from some of the, most of the other uh, media outlets. But uh, they, uh, back in February the 8th, they started reporting this, and I'm going to link to the video. I'm not going to play it. It's theirs. We'll link to it. It says, Radiation at J Japan's Fukushima reactor is now at unimaginable levels. One other thing I want to say about this, now, it may tie into why they're having this problem, and you've seen it on many outlets. But it says, uh, nobody knows who released the substance, but radioactive iodine has been detected across Europe in recent weeks. Now, the U.S. has even uh, launched a plane I saw on one site with new uh, radiation detectors that uh, is being allowed to fly over Europe. The technicians of Europe's informal network of radioactivity surveillance experts called the Ring of Fire were the only ones to know the spike in radiation levels. In the second week of January, the alert sounded in the north of Norway with traces of iodine-131 detected in the air. Other observations followed in Finland, Poland, the Czech Republic, Germany, Spain, and France, according to the French Institute for Radiological Protection and Nuclear Safety. In France, levels of iodine-131 did not exceed uh, 0.31 micro uh, barrels per cubic meter uh, of air. This is a thousand times less than the levels recorded following the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Guys, we have an Arctic vortex that is drifted out very wide as it moves over Japan and pulls that air back into the northern levels it's mixing everything and diluting it but we're getting it uh, not only from underground but remember the robots are getting destroyed within hours trying to go into the damaged buildings there so now with this weather chaos instead of something possibly new 
it may be that this leak is growing so bad but this is the vortex the vortices of the vortex is going right over that island spreading it across the united states canada all across europe guys back through asia back over russia china keeping it circulating so you've got what what did they say seven to eight days you can see where it's coming from now some many have said that there's a possibility of somewhere in the arctic someone could have detonated a nuclear device i don't know but i do know about this but we're watching well ladies and gentlemen welcome to the q cast it is sunday it is, I guess, Super Bowl Sunday. Obviously, you can tell I'm not interested in uh, dealing with La La Land when there's so many horrific events going on. But the thing that's been laid on my heart, and I want you all to listen to this, is that the ongoing Fukushima nuclear holocaust that's still uh, so horrific in the ramifications of what it's doing, not only to the sea life in the entire Pacific Ocean along the coasts of the United States down into Latin America, South America, but all the cases of thyroid cancer and all of the different uh, mutagenic, which means the uh, uh, mutant causing effects even in children along the West Coast. Now, why I'm really excited to uh, uh, and excited is not the good word. Why I'm really exasperated to have to bring this up today is the fact is, is that the entire dialogue coming from Fukushima has been a lie. It is probably the most, uh, most detrimental and dangerous environmental disaster of all time. There are those that absolutely believe it was generated. Uh, if you can go back to Sam Cohen, the former defense secretary, the ability to generate everything from earthquakes to tsunamis is a given. Even on YouTube, there's a fabulous uh, video, and I'm trying to think when it was, but anyway, it shows like blue beams going into the heart of the reactor. <laughs> Now, whether you believe in neutron flux or not, in essence, what, what it indicates is somebody, even after generating the tsunami or the earthquake that generated the tsunami wasn't satisfied with that, so they had to go and basically kick in a little extra help. Now, when this thing started, and it was back on, and now here's what's interesting, March 11-11, notice that, double 11s. You know, I am astonished, again, that people who even discuss Fukushima are automatically labeled, obviously you know the word, conspiracy theorists. Yet, ladies and gentlemen, excuse me, something as horrific as Chernobyl that got worldwide ongoing coverage doesn't even match what's going on in the different areas of uh, nuclear meltdown that's taking place on Japan's coast. And today I put up an article on my website talking about a flashback that Fukushima, now notice these numbers, is 33,000 times more radioactive, or there's that many, 33,000 times the level of radiation that Chernobyl, after it was covered in concrete. I want you to ask yourself the question, who has the most to gain by covering this up? I.e., the answer is the New World, or the New World Order, or the New World Order, and the globalists. And what's perplexing is the fact for so many uh, uh, years now they've denied that the reactor cores had melted through and today we're seeing massive amounts of uh, stories now being released so many so that it's tough for anybody to deny it any longer so if you think the greatest environmental disaster in history would not be even given any consideration why would you expect the truth to ever come out of the mainstream media? I maintain that when history or when the uh, books of uh, responsibility are opened and blame gets laid at the source, people will have no reason 
to, to basically say we didn't know. Every time there's a new series of events where whales are beaching or, or jellyfish or uh, the plankton are dying or the sardines are dying or the lowest rungs on the ocean's food chain are being uh, uh, basically just mass death, there's always somebody out there to say, oh, it's just those conspiracy guys. Well, I'm telling you this. It's no bloody conspiracy when you've got the amount of dead sea life that's never been experienced before. You've got the amount of uh, dying mammals like they've never been seen before. The records of thyroid cancer and also even mutations in Japan in the immediate area of vegetables and also animals is taking place. Not to mention all the little kids that are being born with uh, severe disabilities and also er premature death. Now, what's perplexing also is that you cannot get away from the fact that all the used nuclear fuel rods uh, that should have been removed were not removed from Fukushima. And so the robots can't even go in to the hot zone because it shuts down all their systems. And, and I want everybody to go and look at the, uh, the story I linked to on just the basics of radiation. I just tested, I live in Bozeman, Montana, and a few minutes ago I just text, tested uh, my meter and we're at 0 0.22 millisieverts, okay? And there's a thousand millisieverts to a sievert. And this thing is kicking out 530 sieverts an hour. Well, just so you know, if you get five sieverts, that's considered uh, almost guaranteed that you're going to be dealing with more than a lethal dose of 50. Lethal, lethal dose of 50 means 50% 50 of the population exposed to a given amount of radiation is going to die. Now, again, what's fascinating is according to Reuters, and I'm reading some of this stuff because I want you to get the full effect of all these facts, the combined amount of cesium-137 contained in those nuclear fuel rods is 14,000 times greater than what was released when the U.S. dropped the atomic bombs in Hiroshima at the end of World War II. And other estimates put it much higher. Now, I want to share something. If you don't believe we sow what we reap, we obviously hit Fukushima and Nagasaki with nuclear weapons. And now the peaceful use of the very technology that we uh, introduced into Japan after the war to make them energy independent is being used against us. Boy, talk about, uh, in retrospect, the idea of just radioactive water going into the Pacific is not the main point. The main point, and this is what's critical, is that there's plutonium, and look up plutonium. Different uh, isotopes of plutonium and uranium have different half-lives. And when you're dealing with what happened in Fukushima, you're dealing with a whole different uh, realm of nuclear physics with MOX uh, reactors, in essence, uh, uh, breeder reactors that actually produce plutonium. So when we're dealing with the idea that any truth is going to come out of the mainstream media, I go back to the fact that it has been the desire of the globalists to kill, okay, to murder, to slaughter, to do away with literally billions of people. And, uh, and some people just don't, uh, I, I can't embrace that. And if you've got the most rich and powerful and famous people uh, obviously pushing for global vaccinations, if you've got people uh, just basically covering up the press because six major corporations own them, if you've got what you've been seeing in the recent headlines of the press uh, systematically trying to undermine uh, the current uh, president of the United States, Donald Trump, and if you've got them denying every single connection to a communist overthrow or an attempted communist overthrow of the United States government, why would you ever expect that anyone would tell you the truth? The amount of radioactivity that's being released out of uh, Fukushima is also being carried around the world still in the upper atmosphere. Fallout literally means that after a certain amount of time, radioactive particulate matter begins to fall out of the atmosphere if it's carried into the jet stream or carried into the uh, winds aloft, it will fall out. But that, that fallout is still radioactive. No one ever wants to talk about the P word, not the P word that Madonna and her, uh, you know, uh, what purple-headed women in strange-looking hats, 
But what we're talking about is, again, the plutonium. Everybody focuses on cesium-137 bad enough, but when you're dealing with the issue of ingested cesium, in other words, you're eating this stuff, you're drinking this stuff, or you're, uh, you know, uh, breathing this stuff, ingested radionuclides have a whole different uh, mortality than just the exposure to the gamma or the beta radiation that comes off, beta and gamma, gamma being the worst. So when, when we're talking about 20 to 40 trillion becquerels of radioactive tritium that have gotten into the Pacific Oceans since the Fukushima disaster first began. And what's astonishing, we've got the classic manifestation of radiation poisoning in the fish. They're bleeding from their gills, bellies, and eyeballs, yet no one will make the simple A plus B equals C. Or in this case, A plus B doesn't equal C because everybody's bloody blind. 150 former sailors and Marines say that they now have radiation sickness as a result of serving on U.S. Navy ships near Fukushima, and they are suing for damages. The military moved in, if you remember, I think it was aircraft carrier, one or two, and a couple other ships. And then after the extent of the damage, they moved further away, but they were in the hot zone for a number of days. And this is what's critical. Iodine-131, cesium-137, strontium-90. And remember in the old days of the uh, above surface testing and the ocean testing, everybody was talking about strontium-90. But what is problematic is, is that those of us in the Northern Hemisphere are going to be especially especially subjected to that. Now, this is why the old days when a lot of prep companies were telling you to get potassium iodate, uh, telling you to get the different uh, iodine derivatives, because iodine-131 uh, can be ingested in the th thyroid where it emits beta particles that damage tissue. And when you start damaging the thyroid, uh, it's it's really, it messes with the entire endocrine system and it can stop physical and mental growth and ancillary ailments including cancer, especially lung cancer, become problematic. Now, the cesium-137 from Fukushima has been found in fish caught, as, you know, caught all the way down to California now, by the way. Uh, it spreads throughout the body, cesium-137, sp spreading throughout the body, but needs to uh, uh, pretty much accumulate in the muscles. And strontium-90's half-life is around 29 years, and it mimics calcium and goes to your bones. Well, this is one time when it's truly bad to the bone. I won't attempt to sing that song, but I will tell you, it is bad to the bone. By the way, I'm reading from an excellent article that Michael Snyder laid out, I think it was almost three or four years ago. So, for the record, March, you know, we're talking March 11-11, coming up on the sixth year of 2011, we're, we're, we're going to be in a unusual situation to see what breaks loose. And these people, the occultists, have... Uh, have their, if you will, their magic tied to numbers, and they move basically in realms of uh, number sequence. Uh, it's believed, listen to this, that the cesium levels at this point are somewhere anywhere from 20 to 40 times the level they were after the heavy atomic bomb testing in the Pacific after World War II. And when we see the endless release in the Pacific Ocean that will be ongoing for our lifetime, but our children's lifetimes, we have 40 million people alone in Tokyo that are having issues. I once maintained, I don't know if, uh, if it will be, but at some point, should we have a major, major volcanic eruption around Mount Fuji, I don't. I can't even begin to tell you what my concerns would be beyond the obvious collateral damage from lava, ash, etc. But what every day that this thing continues on, we should understand that the entire west coast of the United States and up into Alaska, down all the way into uh, South America, obviously Latin America, on the western, western side of the Pacific is becoming more and more uh, at risk of very, very dangerous and damaging uh, uh, ramifications in the pe bodies of the people. So what am I saying we should do? Number one, stay on this Fukushima thing. 
It is, it, it, like I said, for the last couple of days, I'm trying to follow uh, the direction of leading in my heart that I think is critical at this point. And when I start seeing so many lies clustering, that tells me that the mainstream press or that, let's just say this, the control press is trying to do damage control in anticipation of some really bad news coming out. Really bad news. We're talking about areas now that are going to be the DZs, the dead zones in the Pacific Ocean. We're talking about areas in, in literally Japan had this uh, how do I say this? If the same standards were applied that were applied to Chernobyl, go look on a do an internet search and see how closed down and uh, literally it's a no go zone going into Chernobyl, and you're talking about something in Fukushima that's 33,000 times more radiation, and people just kind of go, so what? Today I'm going to be looking at the new movie, The Crippled Fukushima Daiichi Plant. A space survival thriller so immersive and visually stunning, it has driven everyone who's watched it violently mad, including myself. More radioactive water has been found leaking at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi plant. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say they failed to correctly estimate how much water a line of tanks on a slope could hold. I have totally lost my mind and, even now, am completely disconnected from reality. <laughs> We have to confess that another leak has happened. We are very sorry for this. About 430 liters of highly radioactive wastewater leaked from the top of a tank on Wednesday. The water was measured as having 200,000 becquerels of beta ray emitting radioactive materials per liter. The government limit for releasing such water into the ocean is 30 becquerels per liter. TEPCO officials say the water likely drained into the sea about 200 meters away. The tank is situated on a slope and is tilted. Usually, this angle is taken into consideration when calculating how much water it can hold. But TEPCO officials say too much water was added this time and the wastewater overflowed. The tank is the lowest of a bank of five along a slope connected with pipes. The water level is higher in those closer to the ocean, but only the one at the highest position was equipped with a water gauge. Workers believe that if they kept the water level in the tank at 98 percent, or 50 centimeters from the top, no water would spill, even from the lowest tank. But they miscalculated. TEPCO faces an increasing workload as the firm must not only build more tanks, but also cope with an increase in contaminated rain and groundwater, as well as chronic leaks. At one point in the movie, I imagine myself choking my neighbor's dog to death. Folks, I am currently a threat to myself and to those around me. I should be locked up in a mental institution and cared for by top mental health professionals. People in Fukushima still have doubts. Government leaders there have decided to do their own test on ocean water near the plant. Officials held an emergency meeting to discuss the problem. They decided to launch an inspection as early as Thursday. They'll test water near a drain that they think may be carrying radioactive water. TEPCO's president recently vowed to make containing wastewater his highest priority. But Fukushima governor, Fukushima's governor, Yuhei Sato, said he's skeptical. And he criticized TEPCO's handling of the leaks. Fukushima officials say they are summoning TEPCO. They are demanding the utility quickly act to keep more contaminated water from seeping from the plant. Now, the operator of two nuclear plants in central Japan may have to wait a little longer before it can fire up some of its idled reactors. Nuclear regulators have asked for additional surveys to make sure the facilities can withstand earthquakes because they sit near active faults. Officials with Kansai Electric Power Company want to resume operations at the Oi and Takahama nuclear plants. They met with members of the Nuclear Regulation Authority to talk about the three active faults that run near the facilities, and they repeated their claim that the faults would not shift simultaneously. They came to that conclusion after analyzing sonar surveys of regional topography, but experts who were asked to attend the meeting said the interpretation is only convenient for the utility. A senior member of the regulator said there is no definitive proof that the faults will not shift at the same time. Kunihiko Shimazaki instructed Kansai Electric to conduct additional surveys.
Speaking with Arnie Gunderson, who's with Fairwinds Energy Education, radioactivity is already leaking into the Pacific and has been for quite some time, and there's indicators that it has gotten as far as the West Coast. Is that so, of, of the United States? Um, yeah, well, actually, it's five months after the accident. Uh, uh, tuna showed up on the West Coast that were uh, contaminated from Fukushima. And what they did was they ingested the cesium near near Japan and then just swam for uh, five months over to the uh, west coast of the U.S. and still had contamination in them. But now we're seeing the ocean itself contaminated. We're seeing a, a plume or a wedge of radiation. It's about, oh, I don't know, nine months away from the Pacific uh, coast. Um, you know, and it contains about 10 times more cesium than what was in the ocean during the old bomb days, during bomb testing days. So it's a, the measurable slug of cesium now is uh, contaminating the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, the Pacific Ocean is a big place, and uh, to think about it, we've contaminated the Pacific Ocean. Wow. Uh, Arnie, I want to ask you a question in this context. What's possibly going to happen in the future with this situation and what's probably going to happen? The possible and the probable. I guess it's the worst case scenario and maybe, or we'll put another way, the worst case and the best case scenario. What's the worst case scenario we can expect? And then let's talk about the best. Well, the best, the, the worst case is if Tokyo Electric continues to do um, what they're doing. They're not an engineering company. They're an operating company. And uh, so we've got the wrong skill set uh, on this site. We really need to replace Tokyo Electric. But the, um, uh, my fear is a, uh, it's an aftershock. The, um, the, after the Sumatra earthquake back uh, in 04, that was a 9. And, and about two or three years afterward, there was a Richter 8.6. Mm. Um, this was a 9.3, and we haven't had the aftershock yet. None of these buildings uh, you know, that had the explosions, uh, none of these reactor containments, uh, nor the tank farm can withstand it. So the... To my mind, the worst case is a uh, is a seismic event, and I've been saying I don't care what God you pray to, but let's pray that there's no earthquake, uh, and that's uh, um, that's key number one. Um, the the other thing is Tokyo Electric is responsible now to try to empty the fuel pool at um, Fukushima Unit Four, which is the most dangerous one. It has the most fuel in the fuel pool, and that's the one that has no roof over the nuclear fuel. The, um, the problem there is that the um, um, fuel pool has been distorted, almost like a pack of cigarettes getting crushed. So it's really hard to pull a cigarette out of a cigarette pack when, when the pack is crushed. Well, this nuclear fuel is in a fuel pool, and if they pull too hard, uh, they likely will snap a bundle, and, and that will release radioactive material into the building. And Tokyo Electric has already said that they're just going to pump that right out uh, into the air. So. We're not done with radioactive releases. So that's, that's the worst case. Best case is uh, we get rid of Tokyo Electric, replace them with a, uh, a firm that knows what they're doing. Hmm. And, and there are six or seven in the world who can do this job, unfortunately. Um, the, the other piece of it, though, is money. It always boils down to money. That Japan has to admit to its own people that they're on the hook here for half a trillion dollars, U.S. dollars. Wow. And right now, the Abe regime doesn't want that to happen because if people realize the cost, they're going to say, well, we don't want any more nuclear plants starting back up. Um, and the last piece is citizen oversight. We're, we're uh, constantly frustrated. We have scientists contacting us, doctors contacting us, telling us that their patients are suffering from radiation-induced injuries or you know, they're noticing deformities in, in animals and plants. Um, but yet the Japanese government is um, trying to put the heat on them to prevent those studies from moving forward. So uh, with citizen oversight, we've got to go around this government infrastructure. Um, so a new contractor with some citizen oversight and the admission that this is a really costly problem, um, I think they can move forward. But if they don't do those three things, we're going to be mired in this mess. What then is the is the best we can expect in these circumstances, Arnie Gunderson, talking about Fukushima? Well, the, at least for another two years, the plant is going to be uh, leaking into the Pacific. So it, 
there's nothing they can do to prevent the groundwater from moving into the Pacific for at least another two years. Uh, two years out, the ice wall may work, it may not. So we're going to see not just the contamination that that's there, but new contamination leaking into the Pacific. That, that's the, the, the best case, if, if that's all that happens. And of course, uh, we all have to pray that there's no earthquake, because the, the, at least two of the structures, Fukushima 4 and Fukushima 3, are really compromised when it comes to uh, a potential for earthquake damage. In the, uh, I think it's the E News, uh, E News, the website. They took the, talk about 100 babies with polydactyl uh, situation. They have six fingers. This kind of exotic, strange, you know, night of the living dead kind of things happening there. There's an X-ray picture, I think, on their website of of a hand with six digits. Have you heard about that? Uh, yes, and E and E News is a great source. Um, I, I check it a couple times a day. Um, you know, we've um, We've seen that, and we've also seen the thyroid cancers. The deformities, the stillbirths, and the increased morbidity is not being reported by the Japanese. They used to publish a report every year that had a prefecture by prefecture breakdown. A prefecture is like a state, and Fukushima prefecture is about as big as Connecticut. So the, the prefecture by prefecture breakdown of, um, of deformities and stillbirths and things like that well, they stopped publishing that report. Uh, they did say that in 2011 there was an increase in um, silvers and, and um, deformities, but they're not providing scientists with the prefecture by prefecture breakdown. You know, that's bad news for science, and uh, um, uh, you know, clearly um, you know, they would rather have the Olympics than be honest with their own people about the, the health effects they're, they're facing. Men, and especially men in government, are, are driving this train and they really do want to ignore the, uh, the health consequences that, uh, that are occurring up there. Now you can say, well, you're not saying so what, but what can you do about it? Number one, you hold your representatives accountable. Hopefully with the new, um, the new president, the new cabinet, people begin to see how this is. Now I want to share something. There was a gentleman who developed a form of what would be called photo remediation of uh, nuclear uh, fission or nuclear uh, byproduct breakdown. He was murdered. He had a company in, I think, Boise, Idaho. And I used to know his name because I used to talk about him all the time. But there are ways of neutralizing radiation known to the inner circle. But why would they neutralize? Again, I want to say that word, um, photoremediation. And if people don't think it uh, isn't a big deal, then ask yourself, who has the most to gain by killing the guy that came up with probably one of the most brilliant ways to uh, render active radioactive particles, um, just basically neutralize them? So the, whole, the, the reality of what is happening is that it's planetary in scope. Getting back to all the most powerful men, the richest men. Remember, these are the people that want everybody else but them dead. And they're being generous, you know. They want to leave about 500 million people, obviously Georgia Guidestones, but everybody who is a population control freak is wanting uh, the acceleration of people just simply die. Because, ladies and gentlemen, they're the elite. They want to be, so many of them want to be gods, yet you're an, a useless eater. And by the way, if you understand that what is happening now in the northern hemisphere as well as the southern hemisphere, those of you who have ever been to Mallorca, Spain, or even into uh, the Sahara Desert, when they got snow there, they got problems. When you're seeing snow in uh, uh, Australia, when you're seeing uh, uh, snow throughout uh, Southeast Asia, when you're seeing, uh, uh, if you will, anomalies that are off the chart because there were no charts capable of literally pinpointing the amount of damage being done. And so I want you to really pay attention to those articles I'm putting up on Fukushima and especially on the remediation because one of the things you're going to have to move, and I'm saying this, at what level, here's a question I'm going to pose to everybody who lives from Seattle down to the Baja. And you send me an email, and, and seriously, I, I'm being as, as uh, gently persuasive as I know how to be. At what level 
will you decide that you, and I, that you can no longer stay on the coast? At what level? Go and look up, uh, you know, exposure levels to radiation. And look up, you know, that some of this stuff is 530 uh, sieverts, not millisieverts, uh, uh, sieverts uh, 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 an hour. And the thing is, is if you look at, I mean, lethal dose over a lifetime, I think most of the charts are 275, and that's over your lifetime. I mean, if you were exposed to just, you know, a thousands of this, they'd be treating you for radiation sickness. So that's why the fish are bleeding. Well, that's why they're uh, uh, being uh, mutated. That's why everything's beaching. That's why they're dying. The food chain is interrupted. And ladies and gentlemen, when the plankton goes and when the sardines go all the way up the food uh, ladder and the ocean, everything goes. And when the food goes, we go. So please, that's something that I really want you to consider. Uh, again, this is Sunday, and we're talking about the very things going on in the oceans of the world. And when we're recorded in history, and by the way, Southern Hemisphere is not going to escape this. When history looks back or even the judgment books are opened, if you ever have heard the statement that I used to coin on the talk, I, or I think I coined it on their talk radio, I, I, I know I did, dumb unto death, now we're going to have to move to even a, uh, a, a little stronger wording, denial unto destruction slash yours. If somebody says this is a um, conspiracy theory, fear mongering, ask them to go tell you what the lethal dose of radiation is. Ask them to give you the background on Chernobyl. Ask them to give you the background on, obviously, the cover-up and cover-over of what's been going on with the amount of radiation and also the core of the reactors uh, melting through. They've known it for a long time. So we're, it's becoming more and more problematic. Now I'm going to basically jump to something that if you understand starvation... And with the, I think, I'll stand correct on this, but I think 60 to 70% of the world's population live around the coast and are dependent on the, the coastal food supply for their major protein sustenance. If you look back at Mount Tambora, T-A-M-B-O-R-A, and when it exploded with supposedly the, la the largest recorded explosion in volcano history, all the ash that went in, up into the upper atmosphere was distributed throughout the northern hemisphere so that it began, it began really getting cold. And during that time period, obviously, uh, Mary Shelley wrote her book, Frankenstein, the Monster. Uh, there were so many events happening during that time period, but the bottom line was the people that had food or had money could eat, not on the same uh, level they used to be able to, but so many people starved and so many people died. You've got to ask yourself this. Begin to make a list. Ladies and gentlemen, I think six volcanoes have come active today. Uh, and these are not just uh, dormant ones that are all of a sudden springing to life. But if somebody's out there that has the ability to calculate, do advanced math, I would like you. I would like to propose this. I'll give you all the credit. I'll bring you on a uh, radio show or, or a, a, a podcast, Skype, whatever. And I'd like you to calculate the amount of cubic, uh, if you will, the cubic feet of ejecta going into the upper atmosphere. I mean, when you've got like uh, Kamchatka Peninsula volcanoes, I mean, they're ejecting ash into the upper atmosphere, sometimes five miles, sometimes six miles, I think uh, eight miles high. The, 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 the cumulative effect of that, it all goes up into the upper atmosphere and depending on the winds aloft is carried around the world. It is my contention that the global warming liars will never talk about that because again, don't confuse them with history. Don't confuse them with the truth, meaning us. You know, just give them the lies. And here's another statement. When you buy the lie, you're going to die. I'm as surprised and uh, antagonized by people that can never answer the question, why is denial a good thing in the face of evidence to the contrary? 
Well, I believe that those of you that are listening to this uh, QCast and will share it with your friends, tell them this. In the, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the most important thing you can do is remember that Esau sold his birthright for uh, something to eat. And I won't even go into details on this podcast of what the history of starvation. Women sell everything. I don't know if most people even know this, but during the Great Depression in the United States, people were selling their children to childless couples because they simply couldn't feed them. I think there's some photos in the last week uh, on some subject, or excuse me, some uh, photos of the Great Depression showing this. Please understand, it's double Fs. No, not that. It's food first. Food first. Thank you.